Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, is requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till it's over, over there. Ken Carpenter oiling the old swinging doors on your bar of music. And as usual, we're about to uncork a barrel of fun music and high-class trivia in answer to your request to Command Performance, Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Much V-mail has slid under the mailman's tunic since our first guests appeared here in the old hall, and so we're extra happy to have them with us tonight. I refer to the happy couple who reside in the Burns house. Who else? George Burns and Gracie Allen. Well, uh, we're the master and mistress of ceremonies, and one of us should introduce Command Performance's first guest of the evening. Do you want to do it? Oh, George, you shouldn't even ask me that. The head of the house should have the honor of introducing the first guest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Uh... <laughs> it's, um, it's my pleasure to introduce probably the greatest trumpet player of our time. We've had lots and lots of requests from you fellas. But we had to wait till we got to Hollywood before we could present him. <laughs> that sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Here he is, Raphael Mendes. Mr. Mendez play the B on the trumpet, which is impossible. <laughs> and now, fellas... Gracie, uh, Gracie uh, did you see who's standing over there in the wings? Mm -hmm. Sir Aubrey Smith, the grand old English actor. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, I just adore him on the screen. My, he's so tall and erect. He carries his age beautifully, doesn't he? <laughs> he sure does. Gracie, do you think that you'll still love me when I'm as old as... Sir Aubrey Smith. Well, of course, Judge. Why should I feel any different two or three years from now? <laughs> Thanks, kid. I wonder what sort of a person Sir Aubrey is off the screen. Do you think he's just as charming as he is on? Sure he is. I've met him before, you know. Matter of fact, he's invited me up to his bachelor apartment several times. Bachelor apartment? Oh, oh the poor dear man. When I, I, when I see a bachelor, my heart just fills with pity. A and I ask myself, why should he get away with it? I wouldn't worry too much. Sir Aubrey is probably very happily unmarried. Well, how can he be? What sort of life does a single man lead? Every night he calls up some girl he hardly knows, takes her for a ride in his car... They park on some lonely road. Then he... He... Well, uh, go ahead. 
I picked a wrong example, huh? <laughs> we've been. When you were single, you weren't even a success. You never realized your earning capacity until you married me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when you come home at night, all tired out after a hard day's work, do you have to worry about getting a good hot meal? No. I should say not. You can go right into the kitchen and cook it yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be married. And every morning when you take your bath, isn't it nice to have someone around to stick a foot in first to see if it's too hot? Definitely. And that isn't all. I'm always right there to scrub your back for you. Of course, I admit I get a little fun out of it, too. <laughs> you, you have such a broad, massive back all the way down. <laughs> So, Aubrey, living all alone like that in his little room with nothing there to keep him company except a pin-up picture of Dame May Whitty. Say, Dame May Whitty. Huh? Dame May Whitty. She'd make a perfect wife for him. Are you kidding? You want Sir Aubrey Smith and Dame May Whitty to get married now? Well, of course, George. They were made for each other. Yeah, but so long ago. <laughs> be silly. It'll be a beautiful romance. Sounds divine. Yeah. And then a little later, maybe there'll be a pattern of little feet around the house. Sir Aubrey Smith and they may with you. <laughs> the patter of little feet. Well, sure. She owns the cutest cocker spaniel. Oh, oh, oh. Now, you stay right here, George. I'm going to call Day May and tell her to come right down. Gracie, come back here. I introduce the next number, dear. I'll be right back. Oh, fine. Great little matchmaker, that girl. Hope she doesn't find out that Lassie and Ring Tin Tin don't know each other. Uh, say, pardon me, George. I hate to interrupt, but you know our policy here on command performance. You mean no request is too big or too small? That's right. We have some very unusual requests this week from Gary Sachs at 244... And Captain Roland C. Schwartz, a deep bow from us, old man. And Mangrum, the divot man, also sends long requests. It's quite unusual. And then comes one from uh, Julius Kelly and Wilbert Davis, Ernie Duncan and his Marine gang, Short Stuff, Rusty, Sack, Chow, and Lucky. <laughs> this is Lucky. This is the silliest of them all. <laughs> Nothing like this has ever come in before. <laughs> well, what's the request, Ken? <laughs> oh, this will kill you, George. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> what, what? They want you to sing on command performance. <laughs> What's, uh, what's so funny about that? <coughs> oh, and April showers will come your way. Oh. Hmm. I'll be very happy to sing. Oh, no, 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 George. Let's not louse up a good show. Now, just a second. Command performance answers every request that comes in. Yes, If but... they want me to sing, I demand to sing. Now, George. You can. You can't silence a canary. <laughs> you can't stifle a nightingale. Oh, and April showers out. <laughs> Nightingale, I guess you can't do much about a vulture either. Vulture, well, sure, I have a glorious voice. Well, all right, George. If you want to sing so badly, I guess we'll have to let you. But on one condition. What? That you let Joe Lilly and his choir accompany you. Are you kidding? Of course I will. It'll be beautiful. Okay. Well, gentlemen of the AEF, you asked for it, and you're going to get it. Here's George Burns, accompanied by Joe Lilly and his world-famous choir, and April Showers. <laughs> One April shower. No April shower can come your way to bring the part of bloom in May. <laughs> <laughs> I want it's raining. Oh, it's raining. Have no regret because it isn't raining when you know it's raining by all it. And when you see clouds, you see clouds up on the hills, you soon will see clouds of that. But just so keep on looking for a bluebird and listening for a song whenever April showers come along. <laughs> One April. No, okay, 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 boys.
Thanks a lot to you, Joel Elliott Choir, and thank you to Carmen Lombardo. <laughs> Oh, Crosby gets a lot better treatment around here. Well, it's all set, George. Jane May Whitty will be here in a few minutes. Now to prepare Sir Aubrey. Gracie, you can't go around trying to marry people off to each other. It won't work. Why not? Marriage has to have a solid foundation. Strong, basic emotion in back of it. Take us, for instance. Why did I marry you? Oh, because we were in vaudeville together and one room was cheaper. I mean outside of that. There's no use arguing. I'm going to arrange this match between Sir Aubrey and Dame May Willie right now. But, Gracie, you... Oh, uh, Sir Aubrey, Sir Aubrey Smith, could I see you a minute? Of course, my dear lady. Well, I'm sorry this isn't a more formal introduction, Sir Aubrey, but my name is Gracie Allen. Yes, of course. I know the voice quite well. And may I add that the face and figure are even more exciting. Oh. <laughs> oh thank you. You see, George does life in the old bar yet. Yes, it looks like it. Well, I'll see you later. Oh, my, Sir Aubrey, I'll bet you were quite a Romeo in your day. And what makes you think my day's done, Miss Allen? <laughs> the way I feel right now, it's only half past two in the afternoon. Oh, Sir Aubrey, don't tell me you're still a wolf. Well, there has to be a gray one in every pack. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm known to certain young ladies at the corner of Hollywood and Vine as the mature Bob Hope. <laughs> well, I must say this is quite a pleasant surprise, Sir Aubrey. You see, I've heard that uh, you're single. Yes, but it won't do you much good, Miss Allen. I don't play around with married women. <laughs> But it's awfully sweet of you to run your eyes over me like that. No trouble at all, I assure you. Uh, you see, Sir Aubrey, I have a friend who's very much interested in you, and, um, well, you've shopped around long enough, Sir Aubrey. Don't you think it's about time you bought something? My dear girl, if you're referring to marriage, I, I don't believe I'm quite ready for it. You see... First, I'd like to have my fling. Really? I thought by this time you'd be pretty well flung out. <laughs> After all, you're not getting any younger, Aubrey. Uh, I have several friends over at Earl Carroll's who might debate that point. <laughs> but then you must be so lonely as a bachelor, spending every night all alone in your little room. Oh, silly girl. <laughs> Then you're not interested in meeting this friend of mine at all, Sir Aubrey. Oh, hold on. I didn't say that. There's always room for one more number in my little black book. <laughs> What's she like? Well, she's younger than you are. Well, who isn't? <laughs> and she's awfully pretty and intelligent and charming, and she'd make you a wonderful wife. There goes that wife talk again. I see I'm going to have to bear my soul to you, Miss Allen. Well, what do you mean? Fifty years ago, a girl refused me. The only girl I've ever wanted for my wife. Since then, I've tried to drown my sorrow in wine, women, and song. Unfortunately, wine disagrees with me, and I can't sing a note. Oh. Well, I, I didn't know about your tragedy, Sir Aubrey. Oh, there you have it. She's the only girl I'd ever marry. Every night I wonder what's become of little May Whitty. May Whitty? Yes. My dream girl. Well, there's no getting around it. I'm a genius. I beg your pardon? Uh, Sir Aubrey, I have a surprise for you. Eh? What do you mean? Well, I know where May Whitty is. And she's become quite a dame. Well, where is she? Well, now you'd better prepare yourself for a shock. Can you take it? Take it? Of course I can take it. Dame May Whitty is the girl I've been talking about. She'll be here in five minutes. Sir Aubrey! Sir Aubrey! George! George! What? What? What's the... Holy smoke, what happened to Sir Aubrey? Well, I, I told him Dame May Whitty should be here in five minutes and he fainted. 
Well, it's a good thing you didn't say Lana Trano. You'd be up on a manslaughter charge. <laughs> anyway, fellas, while we're giving Sir Aubrey a little first aid, I want to introduce one of your favorite girlfriends, Connie Haynes. George Burns, it's a pleasure to be invited to inaugurate a new department here on Command Performance. So many of you men overseas have sent in original songs that Major Wilson asked me to introduce as many as possible with the AFRS Orchestra on GI Journal. Some of them have also been played on Swing Time, Intermezzo, and others AFRS programs. And in answer to your request, we're going to give them a partial airing here on Command Performance. For instance, here's a bit of one of the first ones we received. Sergeant Dick Hampton's Gray Morning. I can wake up on any gray morning with sunbeams spread in my cell. I can wake up on any gray morning and open my eyes with a thrill. This isn't strange, it's no melody. you guys at 942 were listening. And now, here's a soup song of one called Time With You by Corporal Walter Greenbaum at 502. Time with you Each moment splendor Time to share Future Journal, Corporal. Here's one we got from Captain Joe Blankenship called You Better See Me. If you got a trouble worrying you, better see a lawyer, CDQ. But if you want to see the moon at its best, then I suggest that you better see me. But if you got a headache worrying you, better see a doctor. PDQ. But if you have a heartache deep in the chest, then I suggest that you better see me. Incidentally, the above came from 708. Another OCS alumni sends along a song called Pardon Me for Staring. Grass Bepple is his name, and it goes something like this. Pardon me for staring. You're such a lovely thing. Pardon me for staring. You taught my heart to sing. Search this whole world over for the wonders it might show. But that's all changed since I met you. There's no place left to go. How about that graph, old man? The following song called Heaven USA comes from Tom Halsey and Bernard Ludwig of the Navy. And... Bill Simmons of the Marines. Here's how it sounded to us, fellas. There's a busy
Thanks a lot, Connie Haynes. And if any of you fellows have a song you think worthy of being orchestrated, send it along to command performance, and we'll do our best to see that it gets on the air. And now, let's see if Gracie has succeeded in reviving Sir Aubrey Smith. Uh, are you feeling all right now, Sir Aubrey? I think so. It was a bit of a shock to realize that I'm going to see my May Whitty again. Uh, do you think she'll have me this time? Oh, you're going to propose tonight? Of course I am. I'd even go down on my knees if I thought I could get up again. <laughs> well, now, Sir Aubrey, that's where you've got the wrong approach. Why propose in such an old-fashioned way? Old-fashioned? Well, yes. Jane May Whitty is a sweet little lady in lavender and old lace. Opposites attract, you know. When you propose to someone as dignified as she, you, you, you've got to be a little forward. A little forward. Well, yes. Walk up to her and say, Day May, it's so nice to see you again. Do you, Nick? I, I couldn't do that. I'm not the type who can ask a girl to neck. Oh, I just go right ahead. Well, um, no, no, I, I'd ask her. In fact, it's probably been so long since she's been in combat that you may have to... Mr. Allen... Obviously, you don't know Dame May very well. If I even suggested necking to her, she'd unquestionably hit me over the head with her parasol. Well, maybe you know best. She is a rather old fa Oh, oh my goodness. Look, she just came in. Oh, uh, here I am, Dame May. Oh, how do you do, Miss Allen? Jay May, look who's here. Do you happen to remember a boy named Aubrey Smith? Why? It is Aubrey. Well, I guess I'd better leave you two to yourselves. I know you have a lot to talk about. I'll be back later. May, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you, Aubrey. Let's neck. <laughs> My hearing isn't quite what it was. Did you just say, let's neck? Sure. I do it all the time. <laughs> Great spot. <laughs> you mean you, you actually neck? Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm known in my set as Rumble Seat Whitty. <laughs> You needn't look so shocked. But, but, but I can't believe it. The May Whitty I knew 50 years ago was a prim little girl who blushed if a man looked at her. That was 50 years ago, Toots. <laughs> you want me to be a round haircut all my life? This is incredible. Oh, don't pretend you're such an angel. I've heard all about you and your doings. You have? Certainly. Many's the evening I've heard your name kicked around in the powder room of the Palladium. <laughs> You go to the Palladium? Every Saturday night. That's the night the Marines get in from San Diego. <laughs> Marines? Yeah, man. Not that I don't love the soldiers and sailors, mind you. But those Marines, brother, gun <laughs> By George. What a few years in America can do for one. <laughs> yes, it's a little bit different from our early days in England. Do you remember the night you proposed to me, Aubrey? i never forget it, my dear. You said you needed a little time to think it over. You do remember, don't you? Of course. Have you thought it over, May? For 50 years. <laughs> I'm ready. Well, you never were one for snap judgment. <laughs> but but, but uh, I, I'm not quite sure it would work out, May. No. Why not? Well, I've grown used to a much more gentle type of female than you seem to be. You see, I've been going out, well, with Earl Carroll girls. <laughs> oh, basic training, eh? <laughs> well, by comparison, you are a little wild, May. To tell the truth, I think twice before I brought you to home to my mother. Well, perhaps we'd better get used to each other all over again, Aubrey. Yes, we'd better start from the very beginning. And what's a better way than by having a date? What are you doing tonight? 
Not a thing. I've been on the town since Mickey Rooney was drafted. <laughs> but if we do go out together, please try to remember that I travel with a very hep crowd. I shall do my very best. Well, how have you children been doing? <laughs> oh, splendidly, Gracie. Yes, we're about to blow the joint. <laughs> and get our boots laced. <laughs> Yes, we are going over to the Palladium and, and uh, cut a few. <laughs> and she ain't just beating her chops either. She, um, she oh, ain't. Not that kid. She's a solid potato salad. <laughs> well, shall we take a powder, Aubrey? Okay with me. If you'll promise to eliminate the negative, I'll accentuate the positive. <laughs> And we latch on to anything in between. <laughs> Goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye. My goodness, don't English people talk funny? <laughs> Say, Gracie. Did I just see Sir Aubrey Smith and Dame May Whitty walk out of here to go on a date? You sure did. And you said I couldn't do it. Well, I'll be done. For once, I have to hand it to you. Oh, well, I've done just as well before with other people. You have? Even better. There was a man once they said no woman would ever marry, but I got him a wife. Really? Sure. And you've been very happy, haven't you? <laughs> oh, come on, home. So long. Radio service.